This week, I've been on a conversation about how, as a nation, we have developed the appetite of extending the contracts of people who have gone on retirement and are enjoying their pension, or supposed to be enjoying their pension. The teacher unions have come to corroborate what I said here and have asked that the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Education Service rejects the offer that had been made. But of course, it's not as if he sat somewhere and the offer was made to him. I'm sure that he would have been spoken to, consulted before the minister wrote that letter to the presidency on the 19th of August, which was also approved on the same day, 19th of August, under the hand of Nana Santibide, to his secretary to the president of the republic. So when he speaks, it means that the president has spoken. This week also, I've told you about several other directors of education within the Ghana Education Service, some of who have gotten extension of contracts, some of who have retired and have refused to leave the offices, and some of who are staying in office while the people who are supposed to take over from them are trotting. They are marking time, left, right, left, on the veranda, while the retirees are in office. This week, I've also showed you, Danny, maybe show me, that I, I, I've showed you a letter Suggesting to us that the financial clearance, that the thing of retirees should be a thing of the past, except when they have some special skill that nobody else has. Some special skill that nobody else has. Let's, let's, let's refresh our memory. Financial clearance contract appointment. Please refer to the 2022 budget statement and economic policy, which has been submitted and approved by Parliament uh, for the 2022 fiscal year. The Ministry of Finance wishes to inform heads of ministries, departments and agencies, MMDAs, uh, of some expenditure policy measures outlined in the 2022 budget statement. Paragraph 3, 2, 4 of the 2022 budget statement and economic policy states, Government has, with immediate effect, suspended the granting of approval for post-retirement contract appointment, except in the cases where the skills of the retiring officer are in short supply and unavoidably needed. In view of this, we are unable to grant financial clearance for post-retirement uh, uh, appointment at this stage. Please take uh, treat as urgent. Honorable Abena Seyasari, Deputy Minister, and somebody said, oh, boy. Because I have shown you this week alone, at least up to 10 people who have gone on retirement who have been given contract extension, and it is not because what they are doing, there, there aren't others there who can do it. So this letter is a typical case of Obua. Let's get to the Ghana Immigration Service, because the Comptroller General himself has been given a contract extension after he had reached his retirement age. And it has caused some confusion within the officer rank and in fact, within the immigration service, the officers are talking, sir. If you don't know, they are talking. What caught my attention to follow up this was when I saw some newspaper publication. I said, no, I have to dig into it. And I'm wearing green for a reason. You know, the immigration service wears green. So I want to talk to the Comptroller General directly. Danny, show me the, the newspaper clippings. When I saw it, I took an interest in it because I thought that, look, this must not be happening. Now, it says, the Inquisitor. This is on the 25th of March, 2022, right? It says, um, immigration is boiling over controversial promotions. We'll get to it. Then in the next one. Immigration is boiling. Now, the Accra Times says, tension mounts at Ghana Immigration Service, part one, as tribalism, nepotism, and favoritism take over. Friday, August 5, 2022. Next one, Danny. Now, there's a last one. There's a last one, yes. Tension brews at Ghana Immigration Service, part one. The Daily Satellite, Friday, 25th March, 2022. I saw these things the, once in March and then later in, in, on the 5th of August and I took an interest in it. I have a few questions to ask the Controller General. But first, Danny, show me the appointment letter so that people don't say I'm conjecturing. Signed again by the same Nana Santibede to his secretary to the President of the Republic. The same president under which we're told that because of our current financial situations, we are unable eh, to grant permit. We are unable to grant permit to individuals who have retired, except when they have special skills. And I've showed you this, this week alone 
How many? Next week, I'll show you some more. Now, it says two-year uh, extension of service as Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service. With reference to the letter, um, with reference number SCR slash VA76 slash 203 slash 01, dated 10th February 2022, on the above subject, I'm pleased to inform you that the President has granted you a two-year extension of service as Controller General of the Ghana Immigration Service, effective 19 July 2022 to 18 July 2024. Interesting. I take this opportunity to congratulate you on the extension. Please accept the president's best wishes. Nana Asante Bedi, Nana Bedi to Asante, Secretary to the President, Mr. Kwame Yesua Tichi Accra. That's who is the Controller General of the Immigration Service. Can you find his picture and put it up there on the screen for me? I have a few questions to ask him. Sir, good morning to you. How are you? I'm told that three days into your, your new contract, after you turn 60, three days after your 60th uh, uh, anniversary on this earth, Wonder started happening. My first question to you is that, is it true that transfers were done on the 21st of August 2022, three days uh, into your retirement contract, on a radio or their Motorola's or Gota across the country, and this was not accompanied by any hard copies, as is the practice, and that all requests by regional commanders to get the hard copies, as it has always been done, have been turned down flatly, if all down flat. Is it true? I'm repeating myself. That three days after you got this letter, which was signed, and you find uh, the Commissioner General's, uh, Controller General's picture for me. It's one, it's one of the newspaper clippings. Find it quickly. Three days after your contract was extended, did you announce at a funeral eh? did you announce at a funeral on the radio you were not present at the funeral that promotions have been done and that when you were asked when you were asked where the hard copies are we couldn't get it now now work with me don't, don't be working against me now my second question is it the case that former regional commanders until your retirement, are now being reduced to sector commanders. Is it true that regional commanders who have worked some for four years, some for five years, some for six years, some for 12 years, have now been brought down to sector commanders? Is it true? Under your watch, sir, I'm just asking you questions. Now, is it the case that a certain man, a commissioned officer, Assistant Commissioner of Immigration, Kojo Opon Yeboa, was on Thursday, the 18th of August, 2022, transferred from Tema as regional commander to Bimbila as the district commander. Listen, bring it back, man. So this man is supposed to have been the regional commander at Tema. He was transferred to Bimbila as the district commander. If you know the rankings, a regional commander and a district commander, Omon so how do you transfer a regional commander and make him a district commander? Bimbila, is it true? And that he, particularly, this man I'm talking about, has been on that rank of ACI, Assistant Commissioner of Immigration, for six years. Six years. And six years he has not been promoted. Meanwhile, there's a four-year conventional rule, if you, if you ask any uniform person, they will tell you. Unless, of course, there are certain circumstances. What is the circumstance? Is it that because he's perceived to be one of the enemies of the Comptroller General of the Immigration Service and has confusedly refused to promote him? Is that the case? So what might be the problem with this particular man who has served for six years on the ACI rank? Because he's experienced and he's qualified. What could be the rank? Did he commit any cr crime? And why is it that experienced regional commanders are now being treated unfairly and being Literally, not derailed. Because if you're a regional commander, brought down to a district commander, a sector commander, is a problem. Did they do any wrong to marry such embarrassing, humiliating treatment? Now, my information is that the regional commanders are very bitter. Controller General, they're very bitter. Not just them. There are also some senior officers who are very bitter, and you're supposed to be working with them. They are so bitter that they feel that the way you treated one of them, the late Deputy Commissioner of Immigration, DCOI Peter Cleaver Nantu, was a regional commander for the Volta region for a long time. He was known to be a perceived enemy of, of you, sir. 
And when upon hearing that this man who is now deceased had his health deteriorating and was put on oxygen support at the intensive care unit of the rich hospital, you quickly moved on to replace him and his funeral was held. You were in the country and you failed to attend the funeral of a big man, DCOI, like that. Is it true? These are questions that the officers are asking. Now, four days after the appointment, okay, of somebody to replace him, that lawyer, uh, Peter Nanto, died at his burial service, which was performed at Jirapa on the 23rd of July 2022, without you, sir, attending, even though you were in the country. That's what, that's the concern they are raising. That a top officer like that dies, and you refuse to attend. I saw a recent uh, funeral of a former IGP, and it was so beautiful how they all attended. Now, the information I'm giving now is very important because my sources say it was on that very particular day when people were mourning when you did that announcement of uh, promotions and the transfers. And up until now, there's no hard copy to prove it. There's no hard copy to back it. So the question they're asking now is that, what is going on? And you see, the officers are beginning to question you and the contract extension. And they say, you are... You are a career immigration officer. You came into the fold as a lawyer. They are beginning to question why you have not had any proper military training. That's what they are saying. I don't know. Now, they are asking what special skill is meriting this extension of the contract which was given to you. Because there are many lawyers within the immigration service. Number two, they are asking why there is no commissioner of immigration at this particular time. Even though you have ACIs, you have DCOIs, they are asking why there's no COIs of immigration. What is going on, sir? And they say under your watch, sir, for five years as boss of the immigration service under your watch, the immigration service has become the second most corrupt institution in the country. They said that should be your focus, sir. The officers are now discussing among themselves, I told you, that in 2013 you were interdicted for visa and permit more practices. Subsequently, you were reinstated in 2017 per court orders. Now they are saying that there's a question mark on you. There's a question mark on you. They need that two letters. We'll wrap up with that. They are alleging that somebody was giving promotion two times in a day. They are even alleging that there's a promotion blockade, okay, within the immigration service. And that people within your secretariat at the Ghana Immigration Service have been promoted two times, three times in three years. And people who have stayed on the rank for six years, four years, have not been promoted. Disaffection. They are not happy. I am not the one saying, I'm asking the questions. Now look at this letter. 18th March 2022. Edwin Ajete Doku, Superintendent, Ghana Immigration Service, Bunkurugu, following your success at the recent promotion interview, and they say the interviews have been selective. I am directed to inform you that the Ghana Immigration Service Council has approved of your promotion from Deputy Superintendent of Immigration to the rank of Superintendent of Immigration with immediate effect from, with effect from 13 October 2016. So it's been backdated. The salary scale attached to the post is level 19H. Okay, which is 23,000, uh, 23, yeah, 23,474.77 or to 24,000, whatever. You enter the scale at the initial point of da 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 da, signed controller general. Danny, show me the second letter. This is another letter promoting the same person. The Ghana Immigration Service can approve your promotion from superintendent of immigration to the rank of chief superintendent of immigration, pursuant to regulation five of immigration, blah blah blah. See, same date. One person promoted from superintendent, same day, same person promoted from superintendent to chief superintendent. And that is the question the people are asking. They are asking this, and this is where I'd want Dr. Edward Prempe, who is the chair of the Council of Immigration Service, to step in. If these are the things that you have supervised, and, and I'm asking their questions, so they say these are the things that you have supervised while you were controller general. 
They wonder what will happen now that you have two years contract extension. I'm saying again, I'll say it again, that in a country where you have your youth unemployment rate rising and you have more old people getting jobs, higher than the growth of the economy, as Dr. Yamsi said, and then old people are getting jobs, young people are walking around distressed, traumatized and helpless. We are sitting on a ticking time bomb.